Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Nicola Winkle of the Arizona Coalition for Military Families. The Arizona Coalition is a public-private partnership of the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, the Arizona National Guard, and the Arizona Department of Veteran Services, among others. Its health and employment initiatives have won the Phoenix New Times 2011 Best Do-Gooders Award and are seen as a best practice model for building community support for service members, veterans, and their families. Nicola has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Nicola, for joining us today. Thank you. So veterans and their families, service members, have borne an incredible cost of, of two wars in the recent past and, of course, for previous wars. It is incumbent upon us to come to their support as they have supported this nation. Tell us about the work of your coalition in providing that support. Well, the coalition is really designed to bring together the military government agencies at all levels and all sectors of our community um, to support those service members, veterans, and their families. Um, I think what we're seeing here is, is sort of a, a progression where traditionally it was sort of thought of as the military and in the government's case, you know, specifically the VA's responsibility to care for these service members, veterans, and sometimes their families. And not only is uh, the community and the private sector very willing to step up and they want to help and they want to give back, um, but we really need them. Um, and it needs to be a partnership. Uh, no one agency, however big, uh, sector or organization is going to be able to meet all those needs. We're going to meet them by working together. And the government has always had a difficult time of fulfilling the, the incredible need that comes as a consequence of service and of returning service members. How is today different than it has been in the past? I think it, it is an incredible challenge when you're talking about, uh, you know, just how much goes on with service deployment and reintegration for both the military members and their families. Um, I think what you're seeing is um, rapid strides in the last uh, 10 years especially. What these conflicts have done is, is really advanced um, the focus on things like post-traumatic stress, um, traumatic brain injury, and then just the overall stressors that um, these individuals and families are facing. And the VA, which has done a, an incredible job under very uh, difficult circumstances and tightening budgets, has also redefined uh, certain aspects of care, particularly when it pertains to what we call mental health. But it's such an inadequate term, and it still carries some stigma with it. Talk about the way in which you operate with these various other departments of the U.S. government, of the Arizona uh, state government, of, of our various uh, parts of our defense organization here in, in the U.S.? You know, the coalition is really designed to be a bridge between these very different worlds. It really helps to have sort of this neutral entity in a way, which is the coalition, this public-private partnership, that all of these different agencies and organizations can connect to. Um, and that can, in a way, uh, one of our partners, I think, put it very well um, when they, they framed it as the role of the coalition is to provide the space in which these different partners and organizations can engage in meaningful collaboration. Um, and that's really what we try to do, is we try to create those opportunities for meaningful collaboration. And, and what we mean by that, essentially, is that this isn't so much the kind of uh, uh, kind of holding hands and the community support, the groundswell support, which is very important, the parades and those sorts of things. This is sort of more the behind the scenes. Um, how do these organizations actually functionally work together? How do we streamline how uh, referrals are made to, do, to the different resources? And how do we strengthen the coordination of care um, really on a kind of a nuts and bolts level that directly impacts the care provided to those uh, military members, veterans, and their families. And the experience of somebody who is uh, part of the military, pre-deployment, through deployment, coming back from deployment with families, going through different types of stresses at different stages, um, the, the deployed personnel going through um, alternative um, uh, times of, of high activity and, and little activity, 
it's a completely different life in which, in which they enter. They now are coming back, particularly after multiple deployments, to a family that, that uh, they are not accustomed to, to, to being with. So talk about the different types of services that you try to provide uh, with your members. Absolutely. Um, I think we're seeing sort of a move towards the wraparound approach and the more holistic approach that we're also seeing in kind of other um, kind of arenas and issue areas. You know, the military is doing things like um, they have a, a whole yellow ribbon program that uh, works with folks um, pre-deployment, works with the families while they're deployed, and then works with everybody uh, upon reintegration. And what we really have to uh, focus on reducing the various stressors that are going on. So that's why things like uh, employment are extremely important because obviously when folks are struggling with uh, not having employment, not having an income, that can just exacerbate uh, problems even more. So how do you help people uh uh, find jobs. One example of our initiatives is something called the Military Veteran Employment Resource Center. And this is a partnership effort. Um, this is a physical space as well as an online space. Uh, the physical space is located at the Arizona National Guard headquarters here in Phoenix. Um, it's staffed by a National Guard member and then Amer an AmeriCorps volunteer who also is a Guard member spouse. And it's open to all service members, veterans, and their families. And it's basically a you know a familiar place. Uh, it's a military installation um, where anyone who has a connection to the military can come and get support. They know the people they're working with directly, understand exactly what they're going through, um, and they can work one-on-one -on -one with them. We also have. Um, a web-based platform that is a military skills translator. It was developed by a software company here in Arizona to address the challenge of uh, those with a military background can be at a distinct disadvantage in the workplace if all of their uh, resume and work history is uh, written in military speak. Right. Uh, the human resource uh, scanners cannot uh, pick up um, that they are a match for positions. And so what this uh, system actually does is it um, takes their military occupational specialties, speaks to them in the language that they know from being in the military, and basically takes all their experience and maps it to the equivalent uh, civilian human resource positions. So we're seeing great success um, with that as a tool to help people. And then our staff are actually able to search the back end of that system. So we've had companies contact us and say, I know that, it, that the job I, I have to offer matches this military occupational specialty. Can you find candidates for me? They can search the back end of this system and make that match. And we've seen many, many successful matches um, for very high quality positions. Um, as, and actually what has happened now is that uh, the Department of Defense is rolling out a nationwide program and it's going to be powered by this technology. Um, that, we've, that we've been using here in Arizona, which is wonderful because now it'll be available to everyone across the country. In terms of, of families of deployed personnel, what kind of support do you provide uh, in, in those cases? Everything from uh, child and youth programs that, that provide opportunities for the children um, to connect. Um, we have a very strong uh, survivor outreach services for those families of the fallen, and they will um, walk alongside them for as long as as is needed. Um, in addition to the employment services, there's a lot of different things like uh, retreats um, to kind of help strengthen those uh, relationships, um, which can, like you said, really struggle through the challenges and stressors associated with military service. Um, so there's a lot of different things, but then we also try to link um, them to the things that are available out in our community. So for example, you know, our Arizona Department of Health Services has a very strong program for um, uh, families who have children with special health needs. And so there's a lot um, available to people that they may not even know about um, that are not military specific programs but can also serve them. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit out there. It's interesting to me uh, in, in our military we have a culture of self-reliance. Right. And how do you deal with that, with that kind of, uh, of an issue where we've built a very successful military in one culture but it's okay to come back, find yourself in a different circumstance, and go through a new type of basic training. Right. It is a new type of basic right. training. It's a it's it's a reorientation, and everyone needs it. There's not someone. There's not a person on the planet who is strong enough 
to uh, to live as a as as a solo actor. Right. Uh, it's a multifaceted approach. I can tell you that something that's really important that's happened over the past several years is uh, you see the military leadership speaking out um, about stigma, about uh, that it is okay to ask for help. So you have folks coming out and sharing their own stories, um, and a lot of times, you know, very senior military leadership sharing their own experiences of what they've been through. Um, there's a lot of programs on the military side too that are really focused on the issue of stigma and showing that, you know what, people get help and they get better. Um, and you can recover from these things. These are oftentimes what we call stress injuries. Um, they are not uh, necessarily permanent and uh, you can improve, um, but you have to be willing to ask for help um, and, and to receive that help. For the coalition, you know, a lot of our work is with the partner organizations. And uh, part of what we stress in our training is that we as a community need to operate under the assumption that a person um, who is struggling, um, especially a military member or a veteran, uh, they may only ask for help one time. They may only reach out just that once. And if it doesn't go well, they may not reach out again for many years, if ever. Um, and so it's critically important that we get it right um, that first time. And so part of our strategy with that is to build awareness, engage and equip every sector of our community so that people have the basic um, kind of knowledge of what our military members are going through. They have the confidence that if someone you know, is struggling that they can just reach out and you don't have to be their counselor, their therapist, but you can be a support person and you can say, you know, I'm worried about you, um, you know, can I help you in some way? Whether you're in a faith-based community, whether you're a coworker, someone in higher education, um, maybe a healthcare provider, whoever you are, you have the potential to be the person they, they reach out to and we want uh, whoever that is to be ready. The military community is also a community that comes together to help itself. Um, have you uh, been able to engage uh, others who perhaps come to you um, needing some support in, in supporting um, their fellows? Absolutely. It's really one of our greatest assets and we have um, so many military members and veterans who've been through their own personal struggles and they are in many cases more than willing to reach out and help um, their battle buddies. Um, they want to tell their stories so that other people understand um, what it's like to uh, reach out for help, um, kind of make it uh, less intimidating, um, make it feel more accessible, and just to send the message that you, know, you don't have to struggle alone. I really commend um, those who are willing to share their personal stories. And at all of our events, our conferences, our trainings, the different things that we do, uh, we always uh, create a platform um, upon which those uh, those folks can share their story because it's the really the best way um, to help people understand uh, what they're you know what the military members and veterans are going through and how they can connect to them and help. So, if you were to list the things that you would want to see happen over the next five years, early on, you know, three years ago, we found ourselves saying. Um, you know, we want our community and we want organizations to be equipped to meet the needs of the military and veteran population. And it occurred to us at some point that um, it might be a good idea to define what that means. Um, because otherwise, without a definition, it kind of becomes up to every, uh, left up to every organization to define it for themselves. And unfortunately, what we see sometimes is not very often, fortunately, but at times is organizations who sort of um, kind of tie the yellow ribbon around their front door, call, you know, attach the label of military veteran friendly and, and kind of call it a day. Um, and what we know is there's a lot more to it and there's a lot more that organizations need to do in order to provide effective care and support. So the guidelines for care are basically focused on four areas. Um, encouraging people and organizations to connect to the culture, um, to ask the right questions at the right time, to respond effectively according to their role, and to engage in this dynamic uh, community of people and organizations who are engaged in this work. So you're, you're looking for mind share and awareness 
so people knowing about the challenges ahead. Yep. You're looking for engagement. Yep. You're looking for individuals, businesses, healthcare providers, yep. schools, community organizations, churches to integrate into their services, their programs, their operations a consideration of how military families, service members, veterans exactly. can be integrated into that. And you're also seeking an awareness that this doesn't end with one act. It's not about just recognizing. It's not about just doing one thing. It's about continuing in the same way that the service of our military resonates throughout the next years to also give back throughout the next years. Exactly. In that type of support. Yeah. Nicola, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Absolutely. And, and thank you for your service to, to our families. Oh, thank you for having me.